She probably got oh, so yeah. much stuff tied oh, in and knows so much stuff. She gonna air out everybody. Yeah, Oprah yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah Oprah yeah. good. <laughs> I mean, we were really happy to know. Like, it's, been a, it's really been a slow week. Besides, like, the main thing, we've been everybody talking about the same thing for the yeah. last three days. Michael Jackson and uh, R. Kelly. The R. Kelly. That's about it. That's about the two big things that's been going on, yeah. There'll be something new coming real soon. Some gonna break. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be something to talk about. <laughs> hey, but I can say shout out to Jay Z though, because his attorney people been getting a whole lot of people out of jail. Yeah. Oh, who else they got out? Man, it was some uh, kid in Alabama that they got out. His attorney got out. So they've been working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I expect. Stuff like that to happen because man that that's that's just if you're supposed to have the freedom of speech according to the first amendment then you should be able to choose to say or not say anything you want but man even with it like you can't really say whatever you want like right now like, true like you're a filmmaker like we'll get into that a little bit later. like if you was going to go start saying your real opinion about i guess the lbgt community like you done yeah like well, you're not yeah, but I, you know, I'm on my love campaign. I love everybody, so like, I won't have that problem. I just, I mean, I'm gonna spread love wherever I go to whoever. I didn't make them; God did. So, I, who am I to judge anything or anybody? I mean, feel but me? I feel like we as the people are making certain words and certain things more popular than what they really are. Facts. Because for people yeah. to really kill your career just off some things, your your opinion, like you can't even give your opinion no more. You know, yeah. what I mean? without. <laughs> Yeah, you should be a title. Make a movement, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, facts, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough time. It's a tough time, but we, we'll make it through this just like we do everything else, man. And but we just got to, if you choose love, there's no way you can really violate anybody. You know what I'm saying? Think well, about people it. People do some crazy stuff for love. Because <laughs> <laughs> <No, no. laughs> <laughs> love can get you some crazy situations. That that ain't real really love. love. That's yeah. called jealousy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the other thing. <laughs> it's gotta have a good intention behind the love. You feel me? <laughs> oh no. That love one is a tough one. How do you feel? It's making you do crazy stuff and not love. Yeah. You think so? Oh I know so. I agree. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> oh no. Cause it, you know what I mean? Cause some people do. No, no. Some people be following you for love. They can love you to death. That ain't love. love. That's, that's, love. that's called a fatal attraction. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> There's no love in that. <laughs> that's yeah. selfishness when what people try to control you. And, mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no love in that. Mm, you feel me? Hey man, if y'all got this. But man, now we finna go into this little mix, man, then we come back, man, we gonna get into this interview with Bo McCoy, you know, we gonna talk about all the things you got, the filmmaking you doing, the the small things you got going on in Houston and in Grand Rapids, correct? Facts. Yeah. Hey, y'all stay tuned to this mix, man. Also, I brought Andrea Tyler. She's the uh, writer of the film we're working on. Oh, nice. And star, and set designer, and producer. <laughs> Andrea Tyler. I'm Amber, by the way. Okay. Nice to meet you, Amber. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, everything good, man? Yeah, bro. Yeah, just working on these movies. Man, I see this. I like your set, bro. This is nice. Yeah. Fire right here. Kills night. You got a charge uh, uh where to plug in? Yeah, which one uh so I can keep you all live. Oh, oh cool. Oh that's uh I'm gonna plug it in. What's up, Nerd? Alright Jay, what up? Delphine, what up? Deanna, what's good? Yeah, we 
got we got to promote these things ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We got to do it. Everything it takes. So how long you been doing this? Man, I started over here, was it January the 10th? So it's only been like a month, two months. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you graduated and everything? Yeah, was you still in school when yeah. that? Yeah, I was still in school. Last interview? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was already graduated. Probably graduated to start school again. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Been doing that about a year, and then after that, I'm done. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's dope. Just grinding it out, bro. Yeah. We got a, uh, I see. I opened up a Uber spot on the north side, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you want to come out there? We got a uh, oh, yeah. CBD spot, too. Oh, where? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got a CBD spot. Yeah, I need to pull up. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, send me all that info, man. Yeah, man. Congrats, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me do a commercial for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm gonna yeah. Hey, I'm gonna do a little commercial for y'all. Yeah. 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 The six, the seventh, sixteenth, and then I got a fashion show on the seventeenth, and then I gotta go up to Michigan and finish. Yeah, here in Houston. What fashion show? Um, I could, I gotta get the information. I gotta get the information. I'll have it today. Yeah. Are you doing the showdown again? Did you do a showdown last year? The fashion showdown? No, I wasn't there. They, um, I think they're doing this year in July, I think, the 26th. Oh, okay. It's like a big fashion show that they do. Check that out. Yeah. Because I, I, go, I go back to Michigan on the 18th through the 18th through the 23rd-ish. Mm -hmm. Finish up Frequent Visitors, our, our movie. Uh, uh, the one she stars in and wrote. It's called Frequent Visitors. Uh, we got distribution through Maverick Films. And so... Uh, we just got to get the movie done, and then it's going to drop. You feel me? So that's going to be my second film in two years that come out in Walmart and, and was, all VODs. Because the one for that was a perfect uh, radio. Right? Perfect romance. Perfect romance. Yeah. That was the one that came out in the And then this was the next one. I thought Bear yeah. was coming out too. No, um, Bear was, we, didn't, we did, didn't agree to finish that, but it has a, a trailer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got the trailer to bear, and we also got Angel Horror Film that's out on our um, on our channel. We shot that here in Houston. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I shoot. I shoot in every state. Like I go everywhere to shoot. You know what I'm saying? I I got you know acquaintances and friends all over the country that are interested in doing movies and they giving me locations and stuff like that so I gotta pull up and shoot so but I'm gonna be shooting about three more movies here in Houston in the next two months you know what I'm saying so Not to bring you some of my drip, man. <laughs> I sold out though. I got that more water. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I intended to bring some with me, but I, I, uh, I sold out before I could get here. <laughs> yeah. But I got you. Keep going with up. We're going to be shooting a movie with Kiko prior to in uh, Dallas. All right. Yo, man, we back in this thing, man. About to hop right into this interview with Mo McCoy. Mo, what's happening? Man, what up, though? <laughs> we finally got you here. I know it took a minute, man. Yeah. I know it took a little minute. Man. It was perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. 
Man, but for the people that's listening that don't know about you, just, just give them a little brief rundown. Get out of the best. Okay. Um, my name is filmmaker Momo Coy. I'm a filmmaker. I was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I moved to Houston about six years ago. And uh, this summer, went on the road just filming and uh, making movies. Uh, I'm a content creator and a, and a filmmaker. I do everything. I, I edit, I film. I could be a DP, a director. It just depends on what the movie needs from me. Usually, I like to use a crew. And uh, if, uh, say, I don't have a certain person on the crew, then I might play that position. But usually, I'm the executive producer, and, I, and I'm an actor. Yes. You feel so me? So, we're coming, str coming straight in. we talk about what's the project that you're doing right now. Because you do a lot of movies. Because I, I, I would think I met you, what, almost a year and a half ago at the ZBT Awards. Yeah. And at that point, you were doing around doing 100 movies. Yes. I'm still on that journey of making 100 films. Right now, I'm working on Frequent Visitors. It's a movie about a female serial killer uh, starring Andrea Tyler, who I brought with me. Um, she, she has multiple personalities, and she two of those personalities are killers. You want to say a little more about the movie? Well, um, the movie's about, like you said, a female serial killer. She is uh, the owner of a rideshare program like Blitz or, I mean, the name of the company is Blitz, but like Uber or Lyft, mm -hmm. and she has multiple personality disorders, one of which is a studly type female, the other is very feminine and sensual and in charge of everything, and she herself is a very shy person. She battles everything back and forth, but they just have the urge to kill, and they want to kill everyone. So she's driving the Uber. Kennedy. That's real. You know yeah. what? She's driving the Blitz. We ain't giving Uber yeah. that much love. Yeah. The name of the company is Blitz. Blitz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's a realistic thing, man. Because the human trafficking thing, now, that's what people get picked up on. Is, you know what I mean? Blitz, Uber, getting gone. You know, I was just talking to a friend about the early day. You know what I mean? Get gone out of Uber and Blitz. Yeah. So I'm just like, that. Yeah. That's deep. We, um, you know, one of my main things is making horror and making comedy. Yeah. So we were up to bat for a horror, and um, and she wrote this movie, and it, it blew me away. I was like, man, this is a great movie. I've never seen anything like this, mm -hmm. and I I love that uh, it's female driven and that uh, <laughs> I. I like the killing. I like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow! Like this lady is crazy. <laughs> so um, we uh, we end up having a casting call in Michigan, and a lot of about 110 people showed up, and then we we casted all of them, and we just start shooting, and uh, we we want to raise some more money for the for the film because there were some special effects we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So me and Andrea took took some time off to go to Tennessee, to Atlanta. We was trying to shake the bag from anywhere we can get it, you feel me? Um, because I, I really believed in this movie. And um, when, I, when I was in Tennessee, I heard Doug Schwab from Maverick Films, the CEO of Maverick Films, I heard him say <clears throat> that he wanted to work more with his filmmakers. You know what I mean? And he was bringing on 12 inside filmmakers for Maverick Films. And I, I was like, why wouldn't he want me? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to make 100 films. And I look at him like my film dad because he got like 900 films. Yeah. You feel me? And this his uh, uh, the Maverick Films website is, I mean, the fake, what is it? YouTube. YouTube, that thing is got 7 million subscribers and it's it's doing numbers every day so he dropping a movie every day so you when you when you have a goal and you working on something you gotta you gotta be around like-minded people people who are doing things that you want to do you know what i'm saying he is dropping a movie every day i ain't at that point yet <laughs> so i mean when people when they look at a mobile court film like what do you expect them to get out of that thing well, um, with a Mo McCoy film, I just I feel like they're gonna get a, an authentic 
movie that we did our 100% best to bring the script to life. And it'll be a story that will make you laugh, cry. It'll it'll teach you something. And it'll, you ain't going to see me wearing no dress. <laughs> Um, that's not a thing that I'm personally into, mm -hmm. so I'm not going well, to. You know, just for the viewers, you know, some people, they listen to the internet, all the old Illuminati, some people yeah. are going to make it if they never wear a dress, you know what I mean? So do you really consider that being a thing? I, I haven't had run into that problem. Um, I'm an independent filmmaker, and uh, my deal with Maverick is it's still letting me be an independent filmmaker, yeah. and so I'm going to just keep dropping films, but... Um, I, I look at it this way. I, I want a female to play the female role. Mm -hmm. And if I if I have somebody that's gay in my movie, he going to be gay. <laughs> that's fine with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I'm going to cast people for who they are. And uh, I just I want to do casting calls all over the country and just really just give people who don't usually have the opportunity to be in movies and be on big platforms and turn them into stars, man, because it's a lot of talent out here. So you, you see that as a good thing for being an independent filmmaker because you're able to really pick the cast and really people that you really want to see for their role? I, I, love, I love being independent. I love it because I got a whole process on how I make films. I made, uh, you know, I made my own process. I got, I got uh, from the casting, you know, from the script to the screen, you know, my process is I, <clears throat> once I get the script, I get, I have a casting call. And so we do the casting call. Whoever shows up to the casting call is getting casted in, in the film. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not saying that they're going to be the star of the film, but they're going to get an opportunity to be in the film because they came out. I look at it. You come to the cast and call, you rocking with me. You rocking with me. So, and you have a aspiration to be on, on camera. So I'm going to put you on camera, but I might put you as an extra or uh, someone with a, a few speaking lines or a star. You know what I mean? I'm going to be able to figure that out. Better than being turned away all. That means you yeah. able to use any and everybody to come in. I look at it like when, when I'm making a movie, I want to represent what I really see. And I really see um, all races, mm -hmm. all sizes of people, all <laughs> um, demographics, kids, older people, yeah. young people. I see everybody, you know what I mean? So those people come to my casting call. So why not use them in the movie? Yeah. And, then, and then one of the strategies of my movies are is to have a lot of extras have a lot a lot of extras you know what i mean so if you ever want to be in a movie and you kind of shy and you want to just kind of give it a try and you want to get your image out there you know what i'm saying you want to come to the casting call and if you just now tuning in with us man we still in here with Mo McCoy still kicking with Dan Renegade on 92 channel man so just I know you've done a lot of things here in the Houston market. Like, of course, people in Houston, like for the people that's listening, how can you compare the Houston market to other markets? Uh, Houston is popping when it comes to films. Mm -hmm. Houston is popping. I mean, there's the brilliant women in films. There's uh, the Milton Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Elmore Films. Mm -hmm. These is, man, it's some filmmakers in Houston. I love it. it it's uh, Michael Sterling. Uh, all kinds of filmmakers here, you know what I mean? And I love it. I love seeing seeing these filmmakers do their thing because there's so many stories to tell that I can't personally tell them all. And I would love to, I love watching movies. That's part of my job, watching movies. So I'm supporting everybody, you know what I mean? If, if you got a movie out, I want to watch it, period, because I can learn from it. And I can respect it that you, you know what I'm saying, that this craft is not an easy craft and it takes a lot of concentration, a lot of um, unity. It, it takes a lot of strategic planning and um, and dealing with, with lots of people, you know what I mean? So it's not the easiest, easiest job, but this is something that I have a passion for and I love it. 
you know. So after the after the casting call, usually I, at the casting call, I'll film some scenes because I have a lot of people there, so I might as well do that right there. One thing I learned when I was making Bear the movie, we had we had locations all over Houston, and it was hard for everybody to get there uh, logistically because. <laughs> it was north side, south side. Some people don't go from the north side to the south side. Some people from the south side don't go to the north side. Some people got to work or they time, ain't, you know what I mean? It just was, it was a big learning process on how to strategically pick my locations. You know what I mean? So filmmakers, if y'all listening, um, try to use as least uh, amount of, locations as possible because it's going to help your budget. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bottom line. And that's another thing. I'm glad you said budget. A lot of people really don't understand budget and what it goes into doing anything. Whether it be a music video, whether it be a little bit of commercial. Yeah. People want you to go above and beyond for a hundred yeah yeah they trip it. You can't make a movie. You can't make a movie for a hundred dollars. Um, Angel cost me about fifty five grand. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I raised I raised five thousand on GoFundMe, and then I did some some other little side deals. You know, with with co-producers, I always had to just get creative how to create the funding, and then you know the rest I invested on my own. And uh, you know, I'm about this life. This is what I do. I wake up and work on films every day. You know what I mean? That's just what. Cause I have a goal of a hundred films, and how am I gonna get those done if I don't work on it? And I've seen, like, you know what I'm saying? I've seen you been doing some of the grinders, cause I like you travel. You know what I mean? I see you being in Atlanta, I see you going back to Michigan, I see you here, see you in Florida. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's one of the things that kind of I feel like that separates you from certain people, like, cause some people just stay local. Yeah, yeah. Uh, move around and don't travel. You gotta, you gotta get out here. How can you build your brand? How, you gotta meet people like you can't magically just get a million customers you gotta kind of reach a million people you know what i mean you gotta create good relationships all over the country you know what i mean i got i got people in atlanta i got people in michigan colorado new york cali you know what i mean that i met just because i was traveling and you know what i'm saying and we we rocking for life you know what i mean so and then another thing is not just Make making my movie is building my brand. At the same time, my my personal brand. I am a brand. You know what I'm saying. I'm an actor and a content creator, so I have to build my brand every day. So I think of it like, okay, I gotta meet some one new person every day. If if bare minimum, I meet one new person, I'm growing. You know what I'm saying. But I end up meeting more when I walk into a room. This is why. At my at my casting calls, we have the film mixer, and so that you know you connect the right two people, man, you got something great. You know what I mean? I got a lot of partners, you know that that make this thing up. So, um, when I'm networking, I walk in the room, I meet everybody. I meet everybody. Some some is gonna stick, some ain't. You know what I mean? Some gonna have common interests, some ain't. You know what I'm saying? But how can you know if you don't? go up and talk to him. <laughs> and uh, I see that at showcases a lot because I'm still in the music industry. And when people when be at showcases, an artist will come and not speak to nobody. I'm like, what are you talking about? That other artist right there that's right next to you has a following that you can tap into by just meeting him, taking a picture with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it we got to we gotta unify and really just come together so like when you're at a networking event or any event meet everybody in that mug build your brand tell people about you you know what i'm saying do you, this is my, do you feel like it's not possible for i'm just gonna speak just for houston let's mm -hmm. just say all the people all the filmmakers here mm -hmm. everybody to get together and do a movie i think that's very possible and i'm so down for that like, i'm like so down for that filmmakers, if everybody come here, that's pretty much all you Bring it on your bread, I'm bringing on my bread. We all have this funding. We just want to play. Yes, we can do it. <laughs> it be nothing. That's beautiful. Everybody will have all the casting, all the, the talent, all the locations. Facts. Everything needs on a zero dollar budget.
Facts. That's that's something we got to figure out how to get done, man. Because that's great. But why is it now? Why we got to figure it out? I, I think uh, I think it's already moving towards that way with the with the brilliant women in film. They bringing all the women together, and they they ain't turn away turning away men either. You know what I'm saying? But um, it you know everybody's building on something, and I try to get out and support. And I want to be a part of anybody making a movie because I'm making a hundred movies. So whether you're on the movie or you're on the movie or you're on the movie, I'm making the movie. You feel me? So um, I, I I believe they got a event coming up tomorrow night, the uh, Brilliant Women in Film, and um, I'm gonna pull up on that because I I really want to. I'm I'm about that life. Bro. So, for I, sure. I also see besides the filmmaking and everything, what do you do on the music side? Because I also on see the, you having a lot of platforms, people, you know, artists who perform, get your music heard, and things like that. Well, I, I was a music artist for about 20 years, you know what I'm saying? Toured all over the country, toured colleges, toured churches, I toured uh, neighborhoods, hoods, <laughs> everywhere, you know, uh, so 30,000 units by hand. Um, I just... Uh, been from coast to coast, and uh, with I, it, with music, I'm a executive now. You know what I mean? I took I, I chose about six years ago to really focus on filmmaking, and uh, because it encompassed everything I love to do: music, acting, um, filmmaking. You know what I'm saying? It was all in one. So. On the music side, I'm executive. I work with I work with major artists. I work with major executives. Um, they have lots of opportunities, and they come down the pipeline, and I share it. You know what I'm saying? And so some sometimes I get booked to go different places and and just be there. One time I got booked in L. A. and the DJ didn't show up. So guess who knew how to DJ too? <laughs> Filmmaker Mo McCoy. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So. I'm I'm just when I'm booked I'm there to, to assist capture capture the moment um and the content of the person's vision of what they're doing and help out you know what I'm saying and I'm you know I I I've DJ I rapped <laughs> I um set design uh basically anything I can I can help out with I'm I'm there to help so I've seen you do a lot of stuff man so I yeah. like you're very versatile Yeah. Thank you. Know what I mean? so you. Like, what is the next? What is the next big thing for Mo? Right now, this big thing is frequent visitors, man. The casting call on the sixteenth. You want to pull up, look at, dress to impress. You gotta, <laughs> you know, show me what what Houston got, man. I need to film y'all and put you up on the shelf at Walmart alongside of me and my squad. You feel me? So this is an opportunity where you definitely are going to be on camera. You know what I'm saying? And what can they expect? Where is the cast call going to be at? It's at the Trinity Lounge. It's 5700 South Gessner mm -hmm. um, in Houston. And, uh, you know, shout out to Duvan Pintor. I'm a member of Duvan Pintor, the art gallery downtown. They partner with um, Trinity Lounge. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they throw the throw the parties, and they're going to be putting up art and stuff like that. And so my membership there at Devin Pintor has allowed me to use the uh, use the um, space there for a casting call. So I was like, why not? Um, now that we secure funding for um, for uh, frequent visitors, why not put my Houston friends that I've met and people that want to be uh, you know, in the in this um, arena and get their filmography up. Um, you know what I'm saying? This is a good chance for them because this one is definitely going down. You're going to be so on. So you have an open cast call for every, all producers. Yeah. For production and on the acting side. Yeah. For, for, I need, I always need to work with videographers. I need to work with set, set people, um, sound people, light people. You know what I mean? It's always opportunities for for somebody there, you know what I mean. So, I'm looking to build my my production team of ten people to be able to film anything, you know what I'm saying. And so that's that's where we at right now. Uh, at at sometimes it's just me and Andrea, 
and we can between me and her, we can film anything. It's not a problem. Man, speak on that because yeah. I don't think people. What y'all call y'all show? The Pearl and Pearl show. Well, we get yeah. Come up? <laughs> well, we we noticed uh, that each other was pretty funny, and we we were just trying to do some things that that were. Um, you know, promote our brands and, yeah. and things that we're doing, and we <laughs> we came up with a TV show called Earl and Pearl, but it's a Facebook TV show. We're not looking to put it on any other um, platform. We're just going to go live with Earl and Pearl. See, Earl is, I play um, a cussing pastor, you know what I mean, and Pearl. Pearl is a retired stripper who married the online person pastor and now has her own cooking show <laughs> yeah yeah so it's the earl and pearl show it get crazy you know what i'm saying it's it's funny um we do improv on there uh <laughs> one time uh she fell off the uh the playground into the dirt and people just think it is so real <laughs> and we, we just kind of planned it out you know what I mean so like it, it's a fun show we we just added um Khaleesi to the show she'll be playing Jidget and she's our number one ties player <laughs> and uh and Pearl don't like it like that but uh, Earl, 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 Earl is in Gigi love. Because <laughs> Gigi has the body of a goddess, and she's also the highest paying tither. And that's what makes Earl happy. Yeah. And Pearl ain't that happy because Pearl retirement checks got cut off when they <laughs> shut down the government. So she wasn't able to get her stripper retirement checks. So she's not able to please Earl like Gigi can right now. Yeah, but, <laughs> but Pearl, Pearl don't know that she pleasing. Uh, Earl <laughs> with Gigi. Well, stay so tuned. it's a win win. <laughs> yeah, so it's fun, man. We we you know, we love comedy. Uh when me and Andrea first met, we laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh, man. And so we had to we had to do some some kind of TV show together. It was actually um brought up by by Peanut, uh, I did the Adventures of Pookie and Peanut, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to be a spinoff of the Adventures of Pookie and Peanut, the Earl and Pearl show, because <laughs> Peanut is one of the members of Earl Church, oh. you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's just, man, I just like the fact, man, just the fact that it just goes to show, I mean, you ain't waiting for it to happen, bro. Like, you Facts. really, you know what I mean, Brian, and I think that's what people really fail to realize. It's like, all just happened overnight, like, mm -mm. you know, you've been working. Yeah. You done done most of the other thing most people do. Yeah, I I just I believe in what we're doing. I know that it's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? I look at um, over the years of what I built up, and I just I feel good about it that it's a good foundation. And then um, when this movie drop, I, I think this is the one, man. I really do. And it's uh, which which movies? Are Frequent visitors. Frequent? This is a crazy Uber. Yeah, it's a thriller. Not Uber, Blitz. Let me get Blitz. the correct Blitz. Yes. <laughs> and what's going to really go viral is the Smack Snacks crew. It's a gang in the movie that run around knocking food out of people's hands. It's Smack. the Smack Snacks. <laughs> they crazy, man. Bro, I got to see this crew. I got to yeah. see this crew right Yeah, here. man. Yeah, <laughs> man. But nah, man, before we get up out of here, man, just go tell the people where they can, you know what I mean, they can catch up on you, all the events, your casting calls, and your social media stuff. Both of y'all. All right, you go first. Okay. March 16th, I want to invite all of H-Town out. Y'all know I'm an H-Town native. Don't y'all upset me. Y'all been in my inbox the same way I've been in y'all inbox. <laughs> Touchdown, South Gessner, 5700, Trinity Lounge, 12 p.m. Y'all come dressed to impress like y'all are stepping out. Bring the kids, too. Dress, to, dress them to impress also, but make sure you got a babysitter to get them up out of there after a while. We're having a film mixer afterwards. Yeah. Facts. And you can uh, follow me on, on all social media at Mo Money McCoy. I have a YouTube channel with lots and lots of content on it and movies that you can watch. It's called Fireproof TV. Just type that in to the YouTube browser and you'll see 
there. You can watch uh, Angel Horror Film. You can watch The Perfect Romance. You can watch uh, The Tickler Horror Film. You can watch The 420 Movie. You can watch Fresh Start the Movie. You can watch 31 the Movie. I got 13 movies, <laughs> like literally 13. And, and here comes number 14 with Frequent Visitors. Come to the cast and call, pull up if you want to be in this movie. Like, I'm going to just say it like that because after that, casting call i'm not filming no more to this movie in houston i'm shooting the rest in michigan and then we're done with it and we're gonna go on to our next movie it's your last chance yep it's your last chance until next month <laughs> <laughs> we're so glad to be here make sure you pay your tithes Girl, you ain't come here to be asking these people for no doggone money. I'm we got to get up out of here. How we going to fund the here. church, Pearl? I don't have time. So just cut your time. Turn your time. I got to go. We out of here, man. We ran into this.